Good morning. Good morning. It is Pentecost today. It is a festival of the church that doesn't get as much attention as Christmas and Easter, but still a special day for us. So uh, let us worship together. We're glad that you're here. And uh, I just want to say I'll have a, more announcements at the end of the service. I do want to lift up that our radio broadcast today is provided by the family of Bonnie Boleyn. Let us join together in a time of confession. I'll ask that you turn to page 94 and stand as you're able. And page 94 in the front of the red hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening song is number 532, Gather Us In.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite any children who are present up for a children's message this time. Come on up, have a seat. Got something for you here. See that picture there? So on this picture, what do you see here? You see some, some men, they're supposed to be the disciples of Jesus. And look at what's on top of their heads. It's kind of hard to tell, but those are little Flames, yes, just like we have on our candles here, little flames of fire. And this is about the story that we're going to hear read from the Bible. It's when they got the Holy Spirit. I guess I'm done. <laughs>
Thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, it's a story about getting the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, we don't know what the Holy Spirit looks like, so we have different ways to, to, to describe the Holy Spirit, and fire is one of them. So I want you to look behind you and see this. This is a new uh, pyramid, we call it. Uh, Ann Sorensen, thank you, Ann, repurposed an older pyramid, and, and now we have this new one, and you see the fire there? So that reminds us that this is the day of Pentecost. But as I was thinking about that, I thought, oh, there's more fire over in that pyramid. There's a little gold flames of fire. And in our big banner, there's a flames of fire. And in the prayer that Sandy just read, there were, it talked about fire. So we, do, we talk about this a lot on this day. Uh, and one of the things that nice, is nice about fire, fire can be dangerous, but one of the things that's nice about fire is it uh, gives us light and it purifies, it cleans things. I wanted to show you another picture, other than I gave you a picture, but here's another picture about Pentecost. It's just when the flames of fire are starting to come down. A dove is also the way that we think about the Holy Spirit. What I like about this picture is it's a reminder that there's all kinds of people that the Holy Spirit comes to. You see men and women, you see little children, you see a little baby. Where's the baby? Oh, there it is. Where's the little baby being held by a mom? And the Holy Spirit comes to us all, even to you. The Holy Spirit comes and, and helps you believe, yes. Thank you. Well, so it's a special day. So now we're going to hear the story about Pentecost. So, and on the rest of these pages are little things that you can do um, as you listen to the story. All right, thanks for coming up today. Our first reading is from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them, and tongues rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. 
Please read responsibly from Psalm 104. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! Yonder is the sea, great and wide. There go the ships. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. Who looks on earth and it trembles. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And praise the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. And if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. The Gospel of our Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. A f- number of years ago, a question started to become popular amongst pastors and pastors then in their congregations if they wanted to ask this question. And the question uh, for devotions, the question was this, where do you see God at work 
in your life, in your congregation, in the world? Where do you see God at work? When I first heard this becoming kind of a popular question, I was a little put off by it because there are a number of times in the scripture that we have stories of people who think they know what God is up to and they miss it completely. And so I thought, who am I to know where God is at work? But I have, through the years, warmed up to the question and come to recognize that also in Scripture there are stories of people who indeed do point out that God is at work in this world. It's what our Pentecost story is all about. As Peter stands up and says to this crowd gathered for a a festival, Let me interpret this for you. Let me tell you what's going on here with uh, my fellow disciples of Jesus. And he describes to them, using words of the prophet Joel, that God is at work in our lives right now. Now, if we would go on in the reading, his sermon is actually a little longer, he would start to talk about Jesus, which which is a nice thing. So maybe when you go home, you would want to read what what else he had to say and what happened when he was done with his sermon. So I have come to enjoy this question now, and at our last council meeting, this was our devotions. Where do you see God at work in your life? We've, uh, uh, in confirmation class in our small groups, uh, started to ask this question. What are your highs? What are your lows? And where do you see God at work in your life? Because if we as Christians can't point out that God is indeed working in our world and lift it up, with all humility we do this, knowing that we might not get it right, but if we can't do it, how else will we be witnesses to God in this world? A God who is promised not to be distant and far away, but active in this world. So if we're going to do that, let me tell you a little bit about the Holy Spirit, because it's a pretty vague term. We have spirit, which is kind of nebulous. We say, well, what's the spirit? Spirits can take all kinds of forms. Uh, We have holy in front of that to describe, well, okay, it's God's spirit. Still wondering what it's like. I'll give you a real easy way to understand what the Holy Spirit is like. The Spirit is just like Jesus. As we come to know Jesus, we come to know the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. So Jesus uses words to describe this promised Holy Spirit to us. In today's reading, he calls the Spirit the Advocate. In other translations, it is the Counselor. An advocate is someone who stands with you. A counselor who's someone who also accepts you and works with you. That's Jesus. That's who we understand Jesus to be for us. And this is what the Holy Spirit will be. In another place, he says that the Spirit will uh, teach you all the things that you need to know. Jesus is the great teacher for us also. Jesus says, uh, calls the Holy Spirit the advocate, the spirit of truth. In just a, earlier, uh, Jesus has said he is the truth also. When we come to know Jesus, we come to know the Holy Spirit. And when we come to know the will of Jesus, in this gospel, the gospel of John, that we love our neighbor as he has loved us, When we come to know the will of Jesus, we come to know the work of the Holy Spirit. So I like to describe the work of the Holy Spirit in a common way that we teach it here. And to help us, I'll have you turn in your hymnals to the close to the end, 1,162.
1,162. This is the small catechism that Martin Luther wrote. Some of you who went through Lutheran Confirmation uh, had this as one of your texts. And at the very last paragraph on this page, 1,162, Luther talks about what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. So we might be able to identify, well, I see the Holy Spirit working in this way in my life or this way in my life. This is the way that the Holy Spirit works in all of our lives in common. I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but instead the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and kept me holy and kept me in the true faith. Which is to say, the fact that we're here this morning is the work of the Holy Spirit. I know we all kind of want to take credit and say, well, I decided to come, but the Holy Spirit is really the one who gathers the church around Jesus. Around the world, this is happening. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us faith for each day so that, as you heard me say, your sins are forgiven at the beginning of the service. If you believe that, if you believe that indeed every, all of your sins are forgiven, that's the work of the Holy Spirit to help you believe that. Or if you come forward and receive Holy Communion today, it is the Holy Spirit who helps you receive that and say, this is the body of Christ given for me, the blood of Christ shed for me, amen. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us have faith. Luther goes on, Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all our sins, mine and those of all believers. On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and give me and all believers in Christ eternal life. Let's all say the last words together. This is most certainly true. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives today. There's one more thing to conclude I want to lift up that the Holy Spirit is doing, because I think it's something we often miss, and it's not really uh, clarified uh, strong in what Luther had to say. The Holy Spirit joins us to Jesus in such a way that we will delight in his will and walk in his ways. And that doesn't happen naturally for us. We want to delight in our own will and walk in our own ways. And so as uh, Lutheran Christians, we talk about it using this kind of language. The Holy Spirit has to put us to death so that the Holy Spirit can raise up one who uh, believes and loves Jesus and wants to walk in his will and do his ways and walk in his, do his will, enjoy his will and walk in his ways. The Holy Spirit has to tear us away from the things that we love in this life so that the Holy Spirit can then join us to the things that are deeper, uh, in, true in a deeper way that we might uh, find ourselves recreated to be uh, children of God. That is something that when you ask the question, what's the Holy Spirit up to in my life? That is something we generally don't identify because it is not always a pleasant experience to, be, to die to yourself and to trust that God will raise you up a new person. Sometimes it's only in hindsight that we're able to say, oh yes, that was God working in my life, that I might be willing to follow Jesus, even to bear a cross, even to suffer for his name, because I have come to a deeper truth of what my life is all about. All this is given to us. This Holy Spirit is gift to us because God does not want to let us go, because God cares about us so much, does not want to see us lost to our sins and to death. And so the Holy Spirit comes 
to put us to death, to raise us up, to join us to Jesus, to have us delight in his will and walk in his ways that we might know what is true and good in life. God loves us that much and will not let us go for all eternity, but holds us and stays close to us through the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the glory of the resurrection dawn, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Your response will be, hear our prayer. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel in joy and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, you laid the foundations of the earth, and waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. Grant that the people of this and every nation may give thanks to you for all that sustains life, and that we use with care the land and water from which these good things come. We pray for good seasonal weather for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially, we pray, for those who govern nations of the world, for the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for soldiers and civilians, for peacemakers and relief agencies, for all who work for peace and international harmony, for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, for all who suffer senseless violence and grieve the loss of precious lives. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Lord, send strength and comfort to all in need of your healing touch. Calm their storms, send them peace that they may be still and hear your voice. This day we pray especially for Jane, Treva, Richard, Yvonne, Galen, Cindy, Hannah, Rhonda, Sandy, Laverne, and Harlan. For Marion, Janet, Susan, Joan, Susan, Sonia, Don, Patty, and Gary. For Julie, Amira, Ruth, Bob, Trevor, Erica, Natasha, Evan, Everett, and Rita. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we rejoice this day with those celebrating the joys of life. We ask your continued blessings on Coulter and Megan Lenz as they celebrate their first wedding anniversary today. On Quinn Dawson, observing his first baptismal birthday tomorrow. On Ozzie Lee and Brixton Scott to be baptized here next Sunday. Guide the footsteps and decisions of all new high school and college graduates as they commence new adventures and challenges, not knowing where you may lead them. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strength and dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. All we have here is a gift from God. With thankful hearts and joyous praise, we give of our money and our resources, of our time and our talents. Please join me in singing Create in Me as the offerings are presented.
Oh God, in your love you have given the people of this land gifts of abundance beyond our imagining. Mercifully grant that we may use your blessings to your glory and to the service of humankind. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, fulfilling the promise of the resurrection. You pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is your majesty and glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please join me in praying our Lord's Prayer on the left side of the page. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The table is ready, you're invited to come. If you're visiting with us, we want you to know you are welcomed also at this table. I direct you to the uh, first page of the bulletin to uh, see how it is that we commune, uh, and we will be communing at the rail today. You may kneel or stand. I mean, no. 
no more kneeling.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And in your mercy, you have strengthened us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements I want to lift up before we conclude. We continue to lift up that we have a bulletin board out there with, and this is in the, in the bulletin, uh, with worship assistant needs that we have over the summer now, and also uh, serving our coffee time after the service. Uh, you can also sign up there to help with that. Today our uh, coffee on the lawn will be not on the lawn, it'll be uh, inside. You're welcome to stay and share in some fellowship time. Want to lift up uh, registration for day camp, uh, preschool through fifth grade. More information about it in, is in the bulletin and also in the newsletter that just came out last week. Our boards and council will meet this Wednesday. Uh, there is an announcement about an event tomorrow at the library. Uh, two Lutheran pastors, uh, one of them a professor at Gustavus, wrote a book called Embracing Diversity. They're both going to be at the library to talk about that book. If that's of interest to you, you can see the announcement there about that. Yes. Yes. Um, it's at seven. We have an authoritative voice over here. <laughs> So we'll go with seven. I was, I was going to say during the last hymn, I'll run and check the flyer, uh, but we'll go with seven. Okay. And then at the end of the month, the last two Sundays, we've got some celebrations. One is, a, is a, for my uh, uh, anniversary of ordination. I can hardly believe it's been 35 years. It's just, it just seems like too long. But, uh, uh, but yes. 35, yes. Uh, and uh, more importantly, we want to celebrate and wish well uh, Pastor Matt the last Sunday of this month. Um, so there's an announcement about that. Uh, we'll, it'll be after the service uh, up in the social hall. And we're making plans for that. Please read the rest of the announcements. Please stand as we conclude and receive the benediction. The blessings of the Lord our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Our closing song, number 857.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning.